Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. I am filming this on Saturday, so happy Saturday or whatever day you are watching this. For today's video, I'm going to be going over all of my favorite products for the month of March. If you would like to see what I was loving this month, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I'm a product knowledge enthusiast and I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market. So I might be a little bit low energy today. I got my second dose of the vaccine yesterday and I woke up and I was feeling really sluggish. I took some Tylenol, so I'm feeling a lot better, but I do have kind of like an underlying headache, you know? So bear with me if I'm not the most chipper person this video. <laughs> Anyways, so I want to start off this month with a channel of the month. I've not been doing this very often just because I haven't had the time to sit down and watch my favorites but a channel that I've been watching a lot this month is Chelsea from Glam Girl. Chelsea she actually just had a little baby. Her name is Riley. She is so cute and even though she just had a baby she is still grinding on YouTube and I love how she covers all of the new products. She does a lot of different comparisons as well so if you were curious about how different products compares she will do that as well. She's so engaged with her audience and most importantly, she is just so sweet. Her personality will make you smile and watching her videos will make your day better. So make sure you go subscribe to Chelsea's channel. You will not regret it. And as far as what she reviews, she reviews a lot of the same products that I also review. So we have very similar taste in makeup. So if you like my taste in makeup, then you will definitely like her. She definitely stays more in the high-end luxury sector of makeup. I don't have a ton of products this month. Not too many new new items. I don't know. I just, I don't even have any eyeshadow palettes. That's kind of sad, but we'll talk about it. So first let's start off with a primer that I fell in love with this month. It's nothing new, but I was blessed enough to do a sponsorship with Armani Beauty, and that is where I discovered this primer. This is the Luminous Silk Hydrating Primer. If you're looking for a moisturizing, glowy primer, you will love this. I haven't heard anybody ever talk about this primer, and it is so nice. Nice. So I have more normal to dry skin. I prefer a more moisturizing base. This is a little bit thicker. It's not like a watery base. It has some thickness to it, but it has some slip as well. So it's not going to make the makeup stick to your face. It's just that perfect combination of having some thickness so you know it's going to sink into the skin and last a long time with hydration, but also not sticky. I like a sticky primer here and there, but for the most part, I prefer something a little bit more smoothing, and this is really great. And not to mention, it does add a nice glow underneath the skin, which just makes the makeup on top look really healthy. So this is something that a lot of these products actually might be in my Sephora recommendations that are coming up, if it's not up yet already, and this is gonna be one of them because it's just so nice, I've been loving it. The next product, hard to get your hands on, but it restocked on the brand's website recently. This is the KVD Beauty Good Apple Balm Perfecting Foundation, whatever. I think I messed that up, but I reviewed this like the first day that it came out or the next day or something like that, and it's really good. It is worth the hype. Now, wear time is not its strong suit. So if longevity of foundation is important to you, don't buy this foundation. If you have oily skin, I don't think you should buy this foundation either because I have more normal skin and this does not last on me. Now it lasts just long enough, but what I love about it is how easy it is to apply and how perfected my skin looks. Now people market this as a full coverage foundation and you definitely do get a full coverage foundation, but please don't wear it like all the TikTokers are showing you. Don't dip your brush in and then go one stripe across your face. Use something like a sponge that's going to blend it out and give you more of a natural finish because if you apply a thick, thick layer of this, you're gonna look absolutely awful, okay? So sheer it out, it blends out beautifully. You still get the coverage even when you blend it out and less is more with this foundation if we're talking wear time. So I really like this. I definitely recommend this for dry skin. It is amazing. The next product is a older product and it's a product that I've recently changed my mind on. So I used to not be the biggest fan of the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. In the times of mask wearing, I've been loving this. So I've said this many times before, but I I cannot stand wearing makeup underneath my mask. When I do want to wear makeup and I know I'm going to wear a mask for the day, I will apply just a little bit of this underneath the eyes. So why I didn't like this previously is because I feel like it did absolutely nothing with coverage. It is a very light coverage concealer, but 
to me, I just really don't like it when I'm wearing foundation. When I'm not wearing foundation, it's the perfect under eye concealer to just kind of brighten up the under eyes and it blends in seamlessly to the skin. So if you don't wear foundation, this is awesome. I mean, I'm wearing it today. It looks pretty good. It's with a pretty full coverage foundation, but still I prefer a little bit more thickness in my concealer because I feel like it's too thin and you can kind of see my under eyes peeking through. However, when I'm not wearing any foundation, I really have been enjoying this and it's been one of my go-tos for every day. Just popping it right in here and a little bit right where I have some blueness and it brightens it up, picks my face up. Really beautiful for that. The next product, she is quite pricey, but I have been using it non-stop. This is the Westman Atelier Face Trace Contour Stick and Biscuit. So I'm not as big into creams right now, even though they seem to be everywhere but again the mask thing creams in a mask are gross while I do try and stay away from wearing makeup under a mask sometimes it just happens you know I get ready for the day I get ready for my videos sometimes I need to leave the house so I've been liking setting this with powder but I think if we one day get to the point where we don't need masks I'm really gonna like this so what I like about this shade it's in the shade biscuit is that it's a little bit more cool so I do like to set it with a warmer bronzer and this just blends out so beautifully it's the perfect size to really get into the cheeks as well and for me and my skin tone I just find it to be the perfect contour color and then setting it with a warm bronzer on top is just perfection it blends out beautifully and it's so luxe if you're into luxe packaging it has a magnetic closure it's nice and heavy so you also get the experience with this as well I know you guys have been asking for that powder video lots of powders have come out it's coming soon I, I'm pretty much done testing out all the powders I know what I want to say about all of them but to Two powders have come out on top. So the first one is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. Emphasis on the powder no powder because when you put this on, you literally can't tell that you have powder on your face. It really is just a traceless powder that sets your face. Now, warning, I got mine in the shade too neutral and I was worried it would be too light for me. Boy, was I wrong. So I would say go lighter. I wish I would have gotten a bit of a lighter color because it does slightly deepen the under eyes when I set it, but it's perfect for all over my face. But anyways, if you like a glowy look, but you still want your makeup set, this is the perfect powder. Completely traceless on the skin, so lightweight. Kind of can't even tell that you have powder on, it's awesome. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, it is also blurring. The next powder is a foundation powder. I'm big on foundation powders. I think they are such an underrated product. And I'm so excited to see powder foundations becoming more trendy. So Fenty Beauty, as you know, came out with the Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. I got mine in the shade 230N, just a fair warning. If you are my skin tone, this is a smidge too dark for me but I figured summer's coming anyway so it's fine normally I have more color to me just not right now. Um, anyways, this is a really beautiful powder foundation. I personally prefer to apply it with a kabuki brush. I think just with a kabuki, I think that with a kabuki brush, it just does a nice even coverage all over the skin. I would say this has more of a medium coverage if you build it up. If you use the sponge that's inside, you can get a full coverage, but I love how this wears. I find it to be really blurring on the skin. It just makes the skin look super smooth it wears really well and i think a misconception with powder foundations is that they're gonna make you look powdery that's absolutely not true if you put a hydrating base down as time goes on this actually looks more like a liquid foundation really it just evens the skin and looks more natural so i love a good powder foundation i'm very surprised that these are on my favorites this month but i found myself consistently reaching for them these are the jaclyn cosmetics blush and brush bronzing duo. Now I have one shade that I prefer over the other. So I have Lilac Love and Top Tan. These are more made for fair skin tones. I have more of a light to medium skin tone. So these are a little bit too light for what I prefer, but that was my mistake. They all sold out, so I just picked up what was left. So I picked this one up. Very pretty though. So if you have more of a fair skin tone, I think you would really like this. But the one that I've been digging for more is the shade Pink Me Up and Oh Honey for two reasons. One, it's a little bit deeper than the first one. And second, I I just love the colors in here. I prefer a pink blush. It's the blush that I'm wearing right now. And I use this warm bronzer, which is still not too warm to set over top of that Westman Atelier A contour stick. I love how lightweight these feel on the skin. 
not quite as pigmented so you have to build them up. I find that looking back at some of my older videos, I think I just went a little bit too heavy with the powder. I think it's just a stage of makeup right now that people are preferring more natural makeup and because I'm wearing less makeup, because I'm wearing a mask all over the time, I prefer a lighter look on the skin, less pigmentation, just something that's more natural because that's what I'm used to seeing. So I think these are a beautiful formulation. They do have a little bit of a sheen to them. They blend out easily. They aren't too pigmented, but you can still blend them out. So these have been something that I've just been consistently reaching for and I'm interested in picking up one or two other colors that I think would be more fit to my skin tone. Next up, eyebrows. Lots of eyebrow products came out this month. It was actually pretty hard to narrow them down. <laughs> so I have three different brow products that I fell in love with this month. So I did do a sponsorship with a Chinese cosmetics brand called ZC and one of my favorite items that I tried from their line were their eyebrow pencils. So they have, I believe it's like a sister company that's called the Palace Identity or something. Maybe this is the collection, but anyways, it's a Chinese inspired uh, packaging and it's so luxe, you guys. It's a really great deal for what you're getting and the pencil is just awesome. So first of all, the packaging, incredible. You even get a velvet pouch at the bottom to keep your nice thin pencil in, but I'm keeping it in this packaging still because I love it. But this is the perfect consistency of a pencil. First of all, it's very, very thin, which is what I prefer. I just prefer to have a little bit more control that way. Less is more, hair like strokes, all that good stuff. It feels so heavy. Like the packaging is so luxurious and the consistency of the pencil itself is a little bit more waxy. If you prefer something more creamy, then you won't like this one. But if you're like me, I like something that just isn't quite as pigmented and isn't quite as blendable, but is more waxy, powdery kind of base. And these kind of fill that void. Today I'm wearing the shade number two and I know it's like a random company but their eyebrow products are so good. The next eyebrow pencil is from Gucci Beauty. Now I made a mistake and have the wrong shade. I have the shade Auburn. I do not have Auburn hair but I've been making it work anyways. I've been using it when I'm doing warmer looks so it doesn't look as weird but if I'm wearing a cool tone look I'm not going to grab for this. I'm thinking during the Sephora sale to pick up a color that actually matches my hair but this is called a powder eyebrow pencil and that's why I love it. It blends out so easily on the eyebrows like a powder. I would say my preference for eyebrow products are actually putting powder in the eyebrows. I just think the way that they blend makes the eyebrow look really clean and very natural as opposed to a pencil, even though I'm featuring only pencils today. So this definitely is reminiscent of a powder in a pencil form. So I think that's why I really love it. It's a bit of a thicker tip, but I'm okay with it just because of how easily it blends out. So the lines that you draw, they don't look too thick because they end up being blended out anyways and it looks so natural. So the Gucci brow pencil, obviously, Super pricey, but definitely, in my opinion, worth it. And the last brow pencil that I've been loving is from Huda Beauty. She launched the hashtag Bomb Brows in the shade Medium Brown. Now, I said this before, I think the packaging is a bit too thick for how thin the actual product itself is. Now, I'm not a fan of using this all over my brows. I feel like it takes forever and also I feel like it just makes the product go down, 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 down. But I've never seen an eyebrow pencil with such a thin, small, little, tiny tip. I prefer to use this for detailing in my eyebrow. So it's perfect for getting right in this area for those hair-like strokes that you want or sometimes I'll do it right out here if I'm going for more of a fluffy brow look. This is the perfect pencil for truly imitating eyebrow hairs. It's amazing and there isn't one like this that I've tried that's this small. So I've been loving it more as an accent piece to my eyebrows, not necessarily to do the whole eyebrow. I discovered a bomb mascara, you guys. So again, Armani, I feel like it's taking over this video, but their stuff is so good. I want to say underrated. They're not really underrated, but anyways, this is the Armani Eyes to Kill Mascara, and you guys, I have very short, sparse, thin eyelashes, so when I like a mascara, that's a very big deal. Most of the time, mascaras, they don't really wow me, but it's not the mascara's fault. It's my eyelashes' fault, but do you see this? My lower lashes don't ever look like this. This gives me length. It gives me volume. Now, I do have a very natural false lash on my upper lashes, so 
pay mind to that. But on my lower lashes, my lashes never look this good down there because they are so thin and far apart when there's no mascara on them. So this has done wonders. And it is a little bit flaky. Like, you know how the Pat McGrath fetish eyes, I feel like it gets so flaky underneath. It makes my eyelashes look so good that I deal with it. Same thing with this. It's not quite as flaky as the fetish eyes, but I just like a flakier mascara because I feel like it just builds up on my lashes better. So it's something I gotta put up with, but just be aware of that. Last makeup product is for lips, and it is the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lip Crown in the shade Natasha. This for me is just the perfect everyday pinky nude. It's not too warm, it's not too cool, it's not necessarily my natural lip color, but it's what I want my natural lip color to be, and it's very, very creamy, so you can put this all over the lips and feel very comfortable. It's not the longest wearing lip liner ever, but it's so creamy and comfortable that I'm okay with that, and I just love the color so much. I have another color, Michelle. I'm not as in love with Michelle. Natasha just kind of top-notch for me, so this is what I have underneath my lip gloss, and it's the majority of the color that you see. I have the Wayne Goss Petunia lip gloss on top so this does have some color but they're kind of like the same color if you like these tones and this is a really nice combination okay I have one tool to talk about from Refer. So Refer came out with the number 23 brush, and I swear before this brush they already had the most tiny pencil brush, but they really outdid themselves for this, and this is just so useful. I consider myself to have smaller eyes, so this is fantastic for detail work on the lower lash line, for blending eyeliner out, even for putting eyeliner on you can use this. I've used this with eyeshadow to make a wing and to line my upper lash line when I want something a little bit more smoky. Today I just use it for the inner corner. I just find that if you have smaller eyes and you're looking for a pencil that does more detail work, this is great. I don't have a smaller pencil brush than this and that's what Refer does so great. They just come out with shapes in smaller sizes for smaller eyes that are great for detail work that other brands won't touch. Okay, last product that I have is actually a hair product. I get asked a lot about what hair products I use and I know I've been promising you guys I had a hair routine coming. It's on my list, I don't know when it's coming. Um, it just sounds like a lot to set up. <laughs> but the hair product that I've been loving this month is from Not Your Mother's and I wish I could be sponsored by Not Your Mother's, you guys, because they are like 90% of my hair care routine anyway. So if you have like curly or wavy hair, I recommend looking into Not Your Mother's. I think they have really great ingredients and very affordable. You can get them from Ulta. But I've been using the Curl Talk Refreshing Curl Foam. So this isn't my main curl product. I use this on like second, third day hair because it's so lightweight. It doesn't make your hair crunchy. It just refreshes the curls. I will use my normal curling products on day one. Then I'll go to sleep. Day two, I wake up. My curls are kind of funky looking, a little bit frizzy. I will take a spray bottle with water in it and just dampen my hair. And then I go in with this foam. It's so lightweight. And I re-scrunch my hair. And again, I have those beautiful curls that I <laughs> No, but um, it just refreshes the curls and it's something that's a little bit lighter on your hair for your second day curls so that it doesn't weigh your hair down or you just don't feel like you have too much product because it's so lightweight. So if you do have curly or wavy hair, I recommend looking into Not Your Mother's in general, but this has been a lifesaver recently. <sighs> All right, you guys, there we have it. Those were my favorites for the month of March. I hope you enjoyed it. We are already a quarter of the way through the year, which is awesome. I I mean, I don't know, maybe you don't consider that to be awesome, but can't wait till summer. <laughs> Anyways, that is all I have for today's video. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.